My parents were Muslim, so I grew up as a Muslim. Um, my father was a devout uh, Muslim. My father was, uh, he was a good man, he was a simple man. Um, he took us to the mosque every Friday. He uh, demanded that we do the five prayers and we'd be there on Friday, and we did. I enjoyed it, we enjoyed it. Uh, our father was doing it, so we were doing it. Um, so there was a sense of security in it. We never thought about who Allah is, uh, what Allah is all about, uh, uh, what is the history between Allah and man, and all we know about uh, Allah, God, is uh, what the Quran told us uh, we should know. And it was not a bad thing. Islam is not, is not it was not a bad thing uh, because I didn't know any better or anything else. Um, since I was young, I had questions. I, uh, I've always considered myself as somebody who liked God. I liked God. I enjoyed reading the Quran and the books that were written and, uh, and the hadith of Muhammad and all of his ways and sunnah and all of that. Um, I excelled in it. I enjoyed it very much. I had questions that seems nobody has the answer for. Once I came to go to school, I met a lot of students on campus who were uh, actively speaking of Christianity and speaking of Jesus. Um, of course, I've always thought that I, I have the knowledge that I need to have about Jesus because the Quran specifically speaks of what Jesus is and who Jesus is. Um, so all of these people who are talking about Jesus being the Son of God uh, and being the Lamb of God, is uh, they're misled. That's what the Quran speaks about, they're misled. Um, so I consider them that way. Until one day, uh, there was a knock on my door. I came downstairs, I opened the door, and there was this man, and there were two men, and they were passing uh, these little uh, booklets about who Jesus is and the salvation of Jesus uh, and all that Christian stuff. So I decided to correct them. I decided to take them on in a conversation and one of them said that they don't have time for the conversation and the other one said that they will meet up with me later that night um, down, down by campus. I did not think he was going to be there. I happened to be in cam on campus that night, 7 p.m. Um, I went by to that place where we were supposed to meet and sure enough he was waiting for me there. So we sat down, we talked and um, we developed a friendship. Uh, it was some of the reasons why I decided to look into this Christianity other than what the Quran says about Christianity was the Christian people, uh, in particular that person who I met who, be, who we became friends with. Um, it was how genuine they were and uh, what they believe about their God and how they, all what they wanted to do is to just share that knowledge with me. That's, and, and they would go the distance to do that, which I thought was neat. Um, a lot of events took place as well they were telling me things about uh, praying to God, talking to God, and uh, having God being present when you talk to Him, which is almost blasphemy and when it comes to the, uh, to the teaching of Islam. Um, I tried it, and to my amazement, I, I asked God for a prayer, and um, I even put Him to the test, which I know I'm not supposed to, but I did. And I told him, if he uh, grant me this prayer, I will believe in Jesus. And in the back of my mind, I thought he will never do that, because he doesn't exist anyway, this Christian God. To my amazement, the next day, that exact same prayer that I asked him to grant for me, happened right before me. And that was the first blow that broke the fence outside uh, that, that, was, uh, that was built up by Islam. I did, not, I did not believe in Jesus when I, after the event happened because I thought it was too easy. God never let up. 
uh, from that day on, uh, he kept on seeking me. I think he was seeking me before then. And I just think it's a neat thing. It's a neat thing that the God of the universe who created the whole earth and the heavens will care for a little one like me uh, to a point where he would specifically listen to me and specifically uh, answer my prayers. Months passed by and I'm uh, researching and talking to more Christians and many Christians were asking me to uh, uh, taking Jesus in as my Savior, which I didn't understand exactly what that means. Um, most of my friends were Christians, or the people that I were attracted to were Christian. Uh, people who I, I was interested in being with were Christians. Again, I decided to put God to the test, so um, I prayed with a friend of mine that uh, Jesus will come into my life. And I said, God, I, I will surrender my life to you. And it's been since that day that God put this peace in my heart that I've never experienced before. There was peace between me and God. And um, it seems like the rest of life issues fell in place where they need to be, uh, which I thought was very neat. Um, God was kind to me during this time. Uh, even when I went against him, he was kind with me. Um, he, uh, he always, he always kept me uh, safe. He always, he kept me. He gave me the time that I need to understand what he wants from me. And I thought that was really neat. That again, this God of the universe will care so much about me. Um, I was relating to the word of the Bible because I was experiencing things, these big things, when they say. Um, that the Holy Spirit indwelled in them, which is strictly uh, Christian language, because that is not in the Quran. But if the Holy Spirit of God is inside of you, inside your heart, um, that's a wonderful thing, that God is with you, which is what the name, the name Emmanuel, the Christ, is, that's what it describes as God with us. So it's, I trusted God for His promises and uh, He always fulfilled His promises. He's always faithful uh, and that's kind of neat that you know God, you know these characteristics of God that um, Islam does not offer. Um, Christianity offers that. Uh, in truth it offers it, not because it's an appealing thing. Um, I thought that was neat. I thought that was really neat. Um, God compelled me in many ways. Uh, he made me happy. He put joy in my heart. And uh, He answered my questions. All I know is I'm in God's hands. So if, if um, um, I hope that what He gave me, this life that He gave me, I hope I can be a good steward with it. Um, whether I can share the gospel or help people in one way, or another. Um, I think it's important that if you have a lamp, you're not going to put it under a cover, you're going to take it and, sh and, and put it on top of the mountain. Um, my sister asked me, she said, why do, why do you want to tell people about your new faith? What's a big deal about your new faith? It is a big deal. It is the truth. That's why I want to tell people about it. You know, I struggle with uh, Islam and Muslims and, and bringing Muslims uh, to God because I was very stubborn. I was a very stubborn Muslim who uh, would not let go because I always thought that Islam was the truth. And when that became, uh, when the reality showed, when the truth became evident that it's otherwise, uh, I was devastated because I've always thought that I had the truth. But can you imagine living a life uh, that you think is, is, is in truth, but it turns out that it's not. God offers truth. God offers salvation. I pray that God will uh, direct me in a way or open some kind of avenue for me that I can go and speak to Muslims uh, who will maybe just put the seed out that 
sometime, somehow, in their life, just like it happened to me, that seed will become a tree, a living tree. I invite my Muslim uh, friends to pray to God and ask God to show them direction just like he did for me. Uh, five minute closing remarks from our debaters and uh, David we can begin with you. Well I'd like to uh, thank Sammy for um, his participation here and thank everyone for, uh, for the good questions and for um, you know sticking through a two-hour debate. Uh, that's good. What else could we be doing that would be uh, more important than this tonight? Um, but I think we've seen, we have two views on the table. There are other alternatives out there, but the, the positions that are on the table for our consideration tonight, uh, we have two. And according to one, uh, God is perfect in justice, perfect in mercy, and must punish all sin, but is willing to do anything to whatever it takes to forgive us. And the solution to retain those perfect attributes is that he voluntarily uh, pays the price for sins. And Muslims have a tremendous problem with this, but again, I mean, think what you'd be willing uh, to do. If you were uh, walking down the street, well, suppose you were king of the world. Suppose you were master of the world, you were dressed in royal robes and you're walking down in the street and you see your, your kid drowning in a filthy pool of mud. Uh, would your royal robes matter to you? Wouldn't you do whatever it takes? Uh, wouldn't you toss those robes aside and jump in and save the child that you love? Uh, of course you would, and that's your love. That's your finite, limited love. Imagine what a being who is perfect and infinite in love, what would that being be willing to do? Uh, I say whatever it takes. And that's what we find in Christianity. And the Muslim wants to say, well, God doesn't need to do that. Well, if he doesn't do that, then sin gets swept under the rug, and then he's not perfectly just. So how does God do that? Uh, well, I find no answer in Islam, but I find an answer in Christianity. Um, so we have God's perfect attributes being retained in Christianity. We have a message uh, that fits with all of the evidence that we have, a message about someone dying on the cross for sins, rising from the dead, and claiming to be divine. All of our early evidence fits with this position. And think about it, according to Christianity, God had a mission for Jesus. God was completely victorious. Jesus came into the world, completed his mission perfectly. Jesus was completely victorious. He chose followers who would carry this message fearlessly. They were completely victorious. They went to their bloody deaths and would not back down. That's the message of Christianity. God is victorious from beginning to end. God is glorified from beginning to end. And then our Muslim friends tell us, ah, but there's the alternative. Jesus didn't die by crucifixion. Allah tricked people into believing it. That's where that view arose. But the Apostle Paul came along later and corrupted other parts. So it wasn't Allah corrupting it by himself. He had a partner in crime. He's going to, uh, he's had the Apostle Paul also deceiving. Actually, that's not much better. Because think about the implication there. God sends Jesus into the world. Jesus spends all these years, and according to Islam, Jesus started preaching at birth. So he started preaching for, for 30 years. And then Allah comes down, tricks, Je I mean, tricks Jesus' followers into believing that he died by crucifixion, and then just can't protect his message from the Apostle Paul. God sends Jesus into this world. The work doesn't get done. Jesus doesn't accomplish anything that lasts. Muhammad has to come along six centuries later to fix the mess created by Allah and the Apostle Paul. And you put all of this together, what happened in the first century? Nothing. You ended up with the largest false religion due to Allah's deception and the Apostle Paul's deception. And God wasn't victorious. Jesus was a miserable failure. His followers couldn't protect the message from the Apostle Paul or Allah. This is the alternative? This is the alternative where we have one view that glorifies God. He's victorious from beginning to end. We have another that portrays Allah, God as a deceiver, and Jesus as a miserable failure. Even if we had no evidence on the table, even if we had no evidence to support either view, we'd have to choose the Christian view just in light of the theology involved. And when we add to the fact that every shred of evidence we have tells us Jesus claimed to be divine, that he died on the cross for sins, and that he rose from the dead, and so we have all of the evidence confirming Christianity, 
I don't think we have uh, any reasonable choice than to conclude that the message of Jesus Christ is found in the documents of the New Testament. That is the only way to be uh, faithful to God, is to believe in the message that has been preserved right now. Thank you, David.